Hey everyone, welcome back to another session of the Pegs Try This at Home. Today we are going to create a portrait inspired by Belinda Griffiths. So Belinda Griffiths is a New Zealand based artist and we had her artwork in the Okanagan Print Triennial Exhibition in 2018. So for those of you who don't know what the Okanagan Print Triennial is, it is a exhibition in partnership with the Kelowna Art Gallery and the University of British Columbia Okanagan and it takes place every three years and it's an international print exhibition so a lot of amazing artworks from all around the world and we kind of go back and forth between the Kelowna Art Gallery and the Vernon Public Art Gallery exhibiting it. So in 2018, I was at the Clone Art Gallery and Belinda's work was part of the exhibition and we are lucky enough to have it in our permanent collection. So today's artwork's inspired by hers and it kind of looks like this. So it is a mono print. So when I say mono print, what do I mean? So a mono print is a print it's just one, exactly what it sounds like. So generally with printmaking, you make lots of the same image. So you're making duplicates or what we call in the printmaking world, we're making an addition. So with mono prints, it's kind of a one-off. Uh, we print it once, there's only one of them that exists in the world and that's it, that's all. So we're gonna create our own mono prints today. So what you are going to need is some paper, preferably some sort of printmaking paper or thicker paper. You will need some printmaking ink, or if you want, you can use uh, paint. Again, if you have printmaking ink, you might want to be using a brayer. If you don't have that, paintbrush works. You're going to need a baking sheet or something flat and hard and smooth that you can put your painter ink on. So it could also be the table or maybe you have a big piece of glass or plexiglass, something from an artwork you want to take the glass out of the frame, that works. And then you will need some miscellaneous tools. So I'll explain what I mean as we get started here. So to get started, you need to think about what type of portrait you want to create. Do you want to do a self-portrait, so something based off of you, or do you want to do just a random portrait? So think about that. Then you need to think about what kind of mood do you want to create. So if you're looking at Belinda Griffith's artwork, like this, you're going to see a lot of lines and movement, and to me personally, it kind of feels a bit chaotic, kind of feels a little crazy, um, maybe overwhelming, just the way that those lines are created in the movement. You don't really see any um, recognizable facial features. It's pretty abstract. Do you want to create something like that? Do you want to do some more recognizable facial features? Something a bit more realistic? Do you want it to be having um, things about you in it. So if you're a child and maybe you will love butterflies, <laughs> do you want to include butterflies in your portrait? Uh, think about what you want to do. Also, when we're talking about portraits, today I'm thinking we are going to be doing sort of like a bust-like um, portrait. So when I say bust, it means kind of like your shoulders up. If you want to do like a full-on, full-body portrait, that's up to you as well. But today we'll just do from the, the shoulders up. Do you want it to be the silhouette of your head or a person's head? Or do you want it to be more of the side profile? So kind of your nose and lips. It's up to you. Think about what you want to do and then we'll go from there. Okay, so let's do it. Your first step is you need to grab your baking sheet. So I have taken some painter's tape and I've outlined the shape and size of my paper. Just because when I'm printing with my ink, might as well just only put the ink in the area where your paper is going to be. You don't need to fill the whole thing up with ink if you don't want to. It's just going to get messy really fast if you do that. So I've got that here. 
And also I forgot to mention, if you want to sort of sketch out some ideas first, go for it, it's not a bad idea. If you wanna maybe practice drawing a silhouette um, of your head a couple times, different angles to kind of get an idea of what you wanna do first, that's a very good idea. I'm just gonna go for it though, so we'll see what happens. So I've got my baking sheet with my painter's tape. Then I'm gonna put some printmaking ink on. So again, paint works too. Um, you wanna put enough paint or ink on here that it's not gonna dry instantly, but you also don't wanna have too much where it's gonna become a goopy mess. So this might take some experimenting or maybe you'll just be lucky on your first try. I'm gonna just put it right on the baking sheet, take my brayer and start rolling it out evenly. Like I mentioned in my last printmaking video, if you are using a brayer, remembering just kind of lifting it up as you spread it so that it's evenly coating the surface instead of just going back and forth. I'm using purple today, because why not? And again, you don't have to roll it out perfectly evenly if you don't want to. If you want to have some crazy texture or um, more ink in one spot and less ink in another spot. It's up to you. I'm gonna try and get it pretty even though. All right. Ta-da! Uh, now you can take a pencil or maybe the end of a paintbrush, something sharp-ish, and use that to make the outline of your portrait. So, I think I'm gonna just do it straight on quick and easy. So I'll do my shoulders, kind of my neck, and my head. It's going to be a really big head because why not? And I've decided to kind of not have the full head in the image. It's kind of cut off here. So if you see that. Okay. Now you are going to want to take a wet rag or sponge or paper towel, something wet to wipe off the outline of your silhouetted portrait figure. Um, you don't have to again, but the way that Belinda does is, is you only see the face. You don't have any sort of ink or color in the background. So that's what I'm going to do today. And you can see as you're wiping, it's kind of leaving some cool smears here. So if you want to leave it, you can. I think I'm just gonna get rid of it though. All right, so that's good enough for me. It's upside down, but you can see it. Uh, now it's experimenting time. So when I was saying miscellaneous materials, this is what I'm talking about. Grab whatever you have around the house that you think is gonna make a cool texture or remove the ink in an interesting way. So I grabbed some Q-tips. I've got a whole bunch of different types of paint brushes here. Um, tissue paper, what else do I have here? Different ends of the paint brushes will work too. You can use your hands anything. So I'm going to start with my paintbrush and in Belinda's artwork, if you can remember, it had those sort of like paintbrush markerly lines. So I'm going to try and emulate that with my paintbrush here. And maybe I'm going to go off the side a little bit because why not? So I like the way it's kind of scraping away the paint. It's making an interesting mark. Do you see that? So I'm gonna take a little bit of my tissue paper, crumple it up, and then maybe dab it on the ink so you kind of get a crumpled look. And I'm gonna do that up in this corner here. That looks pretty cool. See that? You'll see it better when it's printed. Um, Q tips. I don't know. I'll just move it around. So you want to work pretty fast. 
Um, you don't want the ink to totally dry on your baking sheet or it's not gonna transfer onto your paper and print. And then I might throw my handprint in here because why not? So this could be cool too if you have a younger kid and you wanna forever have their handprint in your artwork. Squish their hand in there. Woo! Oh, what else do I wanna do? Maybe some scribbly lines on this side here. Hmm. I like those tissue paper blotches. Let's do some more. And I'll grab another paintbrush, see if I can get another kind of interesting brush stroke here. Let's print this. I'll wipe it on my apron. <laughs> so I've got some crazy fun marks. You will take your paper, lay it flat onto your baking sheet with the ink, and then give it a rub so that it can transfer. You can use the side of your hand, your palm, whatever you feel comfortable with. Once you think it is pressed down, transferred well, then you can do the grand reveal. I'll flip it up towards you so you can see before I do. Woo! All right, so pretty messy though. I got lots of different textures and things going on, so if I was to do this again, I would maybe not do as much, but for this purpose and to show you kind of different things, this just works fine. Okay, that's all. Uh, ways that you can kind of switch this up, you can put multiple colors down if you want. Maybe you're using lots of different inks or paints. Um, you could try printing it again if you want to get more of a ghost image. Experiment. You can use some string, some yarn, like I said, some burlap that will have a really funky crisscross texture. Kind of maybe go on a little scavenger hunt in your house and take a peek around and see what you can use to make these artworks. And do as many as you want. They're super fun. Uh, so I'm just gonna take this, throw it in the sink, give it a quick wash, and then maybe I'll make some more. We'll see. That's all guys. I look forward to seeing what you guys create and stay tuned next week. We've got another try this at home session coming your way. Okay. Bye guys.